Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, then I'm Jennifer. I'm a mum to this little lady called Olivia, who is four weeks old now. And I also have a little boy called Ralph, who is three. And I vlog all about my mummy journey and pregnancy. And I've got loads more videos to come. So I'd love for you to stick around and subscribe to my channel. But today, this video is all about mine and Olivia's one month update. So I didn't actually get around to filming a three week update. So this is our three week and like month update all in one. But you might have seen on my Easter vlog or if you follow me on my Instagram that Olivia actually ended up in hospital. She's fine now, she's totally fine, but it was really worrying for a little while. Um, she wasn't feeding, she was being sick, she was so lethargic, she was pale. Um, but we ended up in A&E and the doctor started treating her for sepsis which was terrifying. Um, luckily it wasn't that, we don't really know what it was. The main thing is, is that she's fine now and obviously feeding again. Um, but yeah, quite a worrying time for us this week. And then when I got home from hospital, I got a stomach bug and a water infection. So yeah, we've really sort of been through it this week. But the main thing is we're both doing well and yeah, onwards and upwards now. So let's start with Olivia. And she is officially registered now. So her first name is Olivia, obviously, um, and that's the only girl's name that Craig and I actually agreed on. And her middle name is Joy, which is the same as my middle name. And also both Craig and my nans are called Joyce, and Joy for short. So she's named after them as well. In these last couple of weeks, I've really sort of noticed how alert Olivia is, and she really has a good look around sometimes, and is really focusing. So I try to do a bit of time where like I'm face to face with her and just try and smile at her or poke my tongue out or pull like facial expressions for her to try and copy. And like she is poking her tongue back out at me sometimes and she is smiling just, I'm not classing it as a proper smile yet because I don't think we're quite there but we are really close. Sorry, Ralph's in the back <laughs> background. <laughs> so as Olivia's been focusing now, I've picked up a couple of books for her so this is like a soft crinkle one, but high contrast, like black and white, is really good for newborns to see. So this is just literally a black and white book, and newborns really like faces as well, so there's all like different faces in this one. But I've also picked up this other black and white book, and this is like a concertina one, so it opens right up, and you've got, yeah, black on one side, white on the other. But it's really good for just laying on the floor, and I've kind of put Olivia on her change mat sometimes, and just lay this next to her and just let her have a look. It's a good way of keeping a newborn entertained for a little while. <laughs> I found both these books on Amazon, so I will put the links to them down below. Olivia just seems so strong. I don't know if it's because she's like a little bit of a bigger baby, like she was eight pounds seven when she was born. So I feel like they've just got that little bit of extra strength to start with, but she's like holding her head up, looking all around. And sometimes I put her in her little bouncer and I can see her trying to like, like lift herself forward to sit, sit up, like sit upright. And you think, you're four weeks, you shouldn't be doing this yet. <laughs> so I said in my last update that we was in a bit of a routine and that Olivia was feeding like every four hours, which kind of happened by accident, but worked out really well for us because we was feeding her at like 10 o'clock at night, going to bed, then she was feeding at two o'clock in the morning and then obviously six o'clock in the morning. And it worked really well because it felt like we was only getting up once in the night. But since we've been in hospital, like all routine has gone out the window. And I did see my health visitor before we went into hospital. And she did say to me like, you know, she's thriving. She's doing really well. So if she's sleeping through the night, like don't wake her up for a feed, like let her wake you up. So we've kind of been doing things more when she's telling us she wants feeding. So we're totally out of routine, which I feel, I don't know, I feel a bit stressed about because I quite like being in a routine, but I know she's just like a tiny baby still. And yeah, we just got to go with when she wants things. 
Um, but she is kind of going about four hours every feed or longer. And she's taking like four to five ounces at a time. So I've said that Olivia is on formula and we're using the Actimil number one milk. So this is the powder one, which we generally use when we're at home. But if we're out, Olivia has also taken the Actimil ready-made formula. These little bottles are so handy. I just always keep one of these in my bag so that if I ever got caught out, I know that I have always got a feed ready for her. But she doesn't seem to mind whether she has the powder, all of this. So yeah, she's having a bit of both and it seems to be working really well for us. So although Olivia doesn't have a set time as to when she feeds and sleeps at the moment, we are being led by her. But we do try to kind of have the same bedtime routine as Ralph. So she'll have a bath with Ralph, then we'll get like new pyjamas on and a baby grow. We'll have a story with Ralph in bed. Um, and then she'll have her bottle and they'll both go to sleep um, and go down for the night. But obviously we don't know how long Olivia sleeps at the moment. Sometimes she might go six hours, sometimes she might go four, sometimes she might go three. So yeah, we are just being led by her, but we're hoping that by establishing like an evening routine, eventually she'll know that that's the time to sleep and you know, in time she'll start sleeping through the night. So during the day when I put Olivia down for a nap, it's normally in her sleepy head. Now I didn't have one of these with Ralph, but I'm so pleased I got one this time around because she just seems so comfortable in it. And it's so handy to just like move around the house with us as well and she can be wherever like me and Ralph are. Um, and it's also good for traveling with as well, like up into my mum's for the day or Craig's mum's and we can just take that with us and know that we've got somewhere like safe and comfortable to put Olivia down for a nap. Also, I know it's not recommended, but I have put Olivia down on her front a couple of times as well. She just seems so unsettled on her back. She never wants to be swaddled. And like, you know when they get that reflex where they like startle and their arms go up and it was just constantly waking her up. She's a baby that just likes being on her front. Ralph was exactly the same. So we have done it a couple of times, but only like during the day when I'm with her and I can keep an eye on her. I feel like it's been quite easy adjusting from one to two children so far. Like Olivia's just fitted into our family so well. I just, I can't imagine the time when she wasn't with us. Um, obviously like Ralph has just been an amazing big brother. He wants to kiss her like a million times a day. <laughs> and sometimes when she's sleeping, you're just like, leave her alone. Um, but I know it's just because he loves her. But obviously, you know, he is adjusting still and he's got a new little person to share my time with and I know he's finding it a little bit hard at times and we've had a few like tantrums here and there but you know generally he's just been excellent but I have been trying to find time to like spend time with just me and Ralph as well and have like a mummy and Sunday. So moving on to me, as I said I got a sickness bug so I feel pretty awful with that and on that same day I also got a water infection so I was put on antibiotics. Um, but I feel like I've got my water infection because I'm not drinking enough, um, obviously being dehydrated maybe from having the sickness bug as well. It was like when I was pregnant, I felt so thirsty and I've just lost that feeling, but I know I need to keep drinking. And also I feel like since having the cesarean, I don't really know when I need to go for a wee sometimes too. And I feel like maybe I'm holding it a little bit longer than I should. So in terms of my cesarean recovery, I feel pretty much back to normal. I feel like I've got all my movement back. Like, I know I'm not gonna be running a marathon anytime soon, but I don't feel really like restricted in any way, which means that I've actually been able to drive again, which just feels so great. Like, I hate being stuck in. And I think for a new mum anyway, like, it does you so much good to just be able to get out and get a bit of fresh air and go out for a little while. So I feel like I've got my independence back being able to drive. Um, like, I haven't taken painkillers for weeks. Like there are times when I know maybe I've done a little bit too much in the day that I just get a little bit of a niggle and I'm just like a reminder to just go, you know, come on, take it easy. You have still had like major surgery, but I do feel really good. My bleeding has also stopped, which is great. I feel like I've bled for so long with Ralph, but I don't know if it's because I've had an elective cesarean. I don't feel like I've bled as much this time round. Um, so that stopped maybe about a week and a half ago. And I've just had that sort of a little bit of like, dry blood that you sometimes get after. Um, sorry, TMI, but you know, we all go through it. <laughs> so I said last time that I'd got mastitis, which was just so painful, but my milk has actually dried up now. Like the first few days of getting that was just horrendous. And then every day it just got easier. I feel like my boobs have gone back to like a normal shape as well now. 
Um, but I feel like as my milk has dried up as well, I'm a little bit more in control of my emotions. Um, I just felt so tearful and I know obviously we've been through a lot as well but I just felt like I could not control my emotions and I was just crying all the time when now I feel like I can just sort of hold it together a little bit more. <laughs> so after you've had your baby a lot of people notice hair loss and like hair just like falling out which I haven't really noticed yet which I'm quite pleased about because I've got quite fine hair so I'd like to keep hold of it um, but I have noticed this new hair that I got when I was pregnant and it's still there, but it's just really annoying short bits that seem to just grow in this area. And um, it happened when I had Ralph as well, but they don't seem to ever get any longer. They just seem to stay at this length. So yeah, I don't really, I can't do much with them. <laughs> so I will show you what my belly looks like one month postpartum. That's my belly. And I feel like it's gone down quite a lot already. Although I've still got this like little pouchy bit and obviously if it's all a bit wobbly. <laughs> and I have still got that linear negra line. So I know I've lost like quite a lot of weight already and I have jumped on the scales and I have got like just under a stone left to get back to my pre-baby weight. And I do feel really good considering it's only just been four weeks but I still can't get into a lot of my pre-baby clothes and I feel like my shape has changed. Like I'm so much bigger on like my hip and bum area and obviously I have just had a baby and surgery and I'm sure I'm still a bit swollen and that round there but it just makes you feel a little bit frumpy and I go to my wardrobe and like I can put stuff on that fits me here but then it won't go around like my hips and I feel like I'm just like living in leggings or I have managed to get back into these jeans. They are a size bigger than I'd normally have but they're like stretchy jeans <laughs> and like they're, because they're quite high waisted, nothing sits on my, my cesarean scar. Um, but other than that, like all my tops are like quite floaty and flowy and it would just be nice to like get back into shape. And I know it's only been a month and there is like no pressure to get back into like my pre-baby weight but I just want to do it for me. Like before I had Olivia, I was in the best shape I'd been in for years and I felt so good about myself that I just want to feel like that again. So I think that's everything for our one month update. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.